Hi and welcome to Red Carpet With. I'm Raja Azuni, your host, back with another episode of RCW. Today on the show, we have not one but two big stars in the house. They've not only created huge waves on the entertainment industry, but they've carved a name for themselves as strong proponents of hip-hop in the country. So we'd like to give them a really warm welcome. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's Joe Flizzo and Sona One. Hello. Thank Hi. Thank you Hi, guys. Welcome to the show. Thank now, you. first Hello. of all, of course, congratulations on your recent win of uh, Anugrah Juara Lago. So Thank you guys you. emerged winners of AJL. How about that? So, you know, as songwriter, lyricists and uh, performers, mm -hmm. how does it feel to win Malaysia's um, prestigious song contest? Um, I mean, first and foremost, it was an, ex an, an unexpected win for us. I mean, we... It was the first time we really competed in Anugra Juara Lagu. I mean, mm -hmm. though I've been in the industry for about 20 years, close to 20 years. Um, it's the first time we entered Juara Lagu finals, and you know we were so we were very focused on like you know the other things you know about the show. Like for us, it was mainly about about performing you know with eleven other artists, um, and you know trying to do our best to shine that night. You know, so initially we were really caught up with like impressing Dr. Ramli MS because we looked at it as an opportunity to perform with an orchestra. And we also looked at it as opportunity to kind of like change people's perceptions of of people's stereotype and hip hop, you know. Finally, you know, and I think the icing on the cake was the win. So then, how was that performance different from anything else you've ever done? Wow. Well, <laughs> to begin with, the fact that we performed with you know a full orchestra that was something that. I've never done, and like at Joe as well, we've never done something to this, you know, uh, to this level. Mm -hmm. So, from the get go already, to try to imagine how does a song that was mainly done like electronically, how do we, how are we gonna bring out mm -hmm. the soul and bring out, like, make it sound organic and mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, um, impress Dato Ramli MS mm -hmm. and the jury and mm -hmm. also the musicians. The I mean, musicians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for mm -hmm. real. Like, yeah. yeah, you wanna see? No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, it's exactly what it is. I mean, I think we just viewed the whole show as we didn't really go into the show trying to win it, you know. Like the song was written a long time ago, and I guess I guess we did have a slight advantage in the sense that it's a it's kind of a true story, you know. The mm -hmm. song is based on my journey as as you know a performer or started out as an you know an artist in the underground scene, you know, trying to make it when times were tough and. Mm. When we used to, you know, ride, drive our canchels to shows, <laughs> and sure. like, you know, everybody, you know, the car would be packed, and like the hotel rooms would be packed, and we won't get paid enough, but it was still all good, you know. So, yeah, in that sense, I guess we managed to capture the emotion of the song, you know, mm. through our performance at AJL, because it's nothing like performing with an orchestra. I mean, yeah. I've done it a few times, you know, like, but like this was different because this is this is our own song, and then um, I mean this was a, a song that's for competition, so yeah. it's kind of like okay, we're performing orchestra, want to impress, but at the same time, it's a competition. But you guys have been on a winning streak, nonetheless. First AIM, right, and then AJL. So Sona One, I mean, you made it. I mean, it was a major victory for you being in the year for, I don't know, maybe a little over a year. Yeah. Tell us about your AIM Awards and how does it feel to be recognized for your art? Well, first of all, I mean, like, it, feels, it feels great, it feels amazing. You know, I feel yeah. very blessed and thankful you know, yep. to be in this position. Mm -hmm. you know, the, um, the awards, you know, I, I, don't, I don't look at those, these awards as a personal win. It's rather like mm -hmm. a collective win for hip hop in general, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, um, I fell in love with hip hop at a time where Too Fat was flourishing, you know. And then after that, you know, there was kind of a, uh, a downfall, and people mm -hmm. started to forget about it as if it was just, you know, some sort of trend. Mm -hmm. And throughout that time, hip hop was still very close to my heart. So I just kept making music and, like, you know, kept pursuing my love for making hip hop music. Mm -hmm. And to see that hip hop from from that moment when you know when everybody thought that hip hop was lost and forgotten right. from that moment until today, to see it come back to life and to see that. You know, mm. um, yeah, I mean, the hip hop yeah. scene has always been 
around and they've always been growing like mm -hmm. from the break dancers to the DJs to the graffiti artists. The only thing is like the mainstream media's acceptance of hip hop in Malaysia, like not really mainstream media but re recording industry. You know, before this they used to like, okay, we got space for one hip hop act. But now it's okay, we got space for three or we mm -hmm. want the whole show to be opened by hip hop. You know, so I guess it's coming back in that sense, but I think to a certain degree like the artists are uh, just as responsible, you know, of keeping the, um, you know, just by being busy, you know, just by being consistent, you know. No doubt. We need to be in the radio. We need to be as competitive as, you know, if you wanna you wanna get as much airplay as City Knowledge, you gotta put out as many songs as City Knowledge, or put yeah. in the same kind of work, like cause yeah, sure. Because these people in the industry, they work day and night. So that's what I keep telling like the team. And yeah, it's great. It's been a great year for hip hop. But hopefully, you know, it will, you know, give inspiration to, you know, the other artists to like kinda like mm -hmm. because I think, you know, we've proved we saw now that the industry is accepting, you mm -hmm. know. As long as we can come up with quality stuff, then it should be okay. Yeah. It seems that you discovered Sona one when he was just seventeen, right? Was it seventeen? I mean like Well, I'm I mean really <laughs> that see <laughs> <sighs> it's always we all be, it's all, we've always been like a big family, you know. Like, um, and I think initially we brought in Sona into the into the family. Mm -hmm. Like Sona is good friends with my younger brother Iman. Mm -hmm. So we in, we initially knew Sona as a graffiti writer. Mm -hmm. Like that was a long time ago. That was like I don't know, man. When you were uh, was thirteen like, or fourteen. Yeah, mm -hmm. Thirteen, fourteen. So, you know, after that, when he finished college, um, he interned for a while with us, like just doing designs and doing like mm -hmm. freelance work. Mm -hmm. And that's when he started dabbling with music. Mm -hmm. So when he started coming to see me, then I, t I started talking to him, like, okay, if you're serious about this music business, start coming to the studio. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we could always use a helping hand in the studio or sometimes just come in and observe. And there wasn't really anything I could teach him because he already had the talent within him. But it's just like more of like understanding how the industry works, mm -hmm. understanding how networking works, mm -hmm. you know. And that's what something I did with Sona quick. Like he started touring with me because the minute he started rapping, the minute he started producing, he started following me on tour. So by 2010, we were already like doing shows in Rotterdam, doing shows in Australia, doing shows, you know overseas a lot mm. and not not to mention you know of course malaysia bangkok and places like this okay all right now we'll have to take a short break but we'll be right back with more on joe and sona one right after this stay tuned Red Red hi and we're back on red carpet with and today we have two big Hip hop stars in the house. It's Joe Flizzo and Sona One. Okay, hey, welcome back. Welcome. <laughs> okay, Joe. Now, 15 years ago, right? Two Fat brought hip hop to a whole other level, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you see, the Sugar Hill, the Sugar Hill Gang, are often credited with uh, rappers' delight, like by popularizing hip hop in US and the rest of the well, world. They were the first ones to have a Billboard hit. Yeah, yep. sure. You know, and they sampled and used the bass line from Good Times by Sheik, right? Mm -hmm. And the song, th that song became like the introduction to hip-hop. Yeah, you used to listen to that. So, Okay, Too Fat on the other hand had Anak Ayam, right? And the video, um, the video contains hip-hop elements like um, breakdancing, graffiti and rhyming, you know? So you guys kind of launched the hip-hop culture in the country. What do you have to say to that? Uh, <coughs> I don't think we can take credit for that. Um, maybe we did help popularize it, but hip hop in Malaysia, as far as I, as I know, like came first came about in the eighties as well. Like it started out in Malaysia with with the break dancers. I've met break dancers from the eighties, like KL City Breakers, mm -hmm. um, Harith Iskandar, mm -hmm. the comedian. He was part of KL City Breakers, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, Dato Yasmin Yusuf was managing them back in the day. So. Mm -hmm. Um, hip hop came about in Malaysia in the 80s, and then in the mid 80s, the DJs were bringing it in. So you had like people like Jake Abdullah, you know, playing mm. playing hip hop, breaking records, playing vinyls, you know. 
And you had the rappers that came about in the late 80s, people like Crash Cars, people like For You To See Nico, um, Lotus Maximus, and, the, the, uh, and then, you know, of course, the mid uh, early 90s. So we were just like, I would, I would consider us as the third wave of hip hop. Mm -hmm. But I think what we represented as well, like we came with the, I think it was towards the end of the analog era and then at the beginning of the digital era, like we came mm -hmm. with the internet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we had, we had the advantage of the internet. Like we used to do gigs and it's just flyers and word of mouth. Like no promotions. Like now you see like everybody doing Instagram blasts and Facebook campaigns and invites. Now nah, we just had word of mouth, and mm -hmm. it will be packed. Like you get better crowds than you do at shows these days sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, like we went from eight hundred people to a thousand people to a thousand two hundred, and next thing you know, within a year from we started out in nineteen ninety eight. Within a year, we had five thousand people packed out at Sunway Lagoon. So it was a movement that yeah. just needed a voice, I believe, and we wanted to be that voice. I mean, you know, to a large extent, I think um, the current Malaysian hip hop scene have you guys to thank for, wouldn't you say? Well, yeah, I mean, it, oh, it's a it's a team effort. Like it was mm. always, as much as we were pushing it to the to the mainstream, yes, maybe we were one of the few, but we also had people like Tetari Crew, you also had Porik Ammo, you, mm. you know, you had radio, you had a lot of people that helped, like people that put us on radio, for example. Okay, so now coming back to your recent win, you know, you wrote the song, Apa Kabar. Uh, no, Joe actually wrote the song. Oh, you did? Uh, and he wrote, wrote the together. Yeah, we wrote it together. together. Yeah. Sona came out with beautiful <laughs> arrangement melody. Right. And, you know, we wrote composed together and I wrote the lyrics. All right, the lyrics. great, okay. Yeah, but it seems that it didn't almost didn't make it to the track list of Havoc, so... Tell a story. Yeah. yeah. Well, um... <laughs> Tell a story about Tai Te. Oh, <laughs> snap, okay. Yo, my homeboy's Tai Te and him. <laughs> well, the basically, sorry, like... Sorry, but, I mean, it's all love. <laughs> I guess, like, this was, like, in, okay, April 2012, 2013. Yeah. 2013, right? Eh, yeah, 2013, we went back out to Thailand and I was supposed to go and uh, show some beats to uh, Tai Tay, they're, uh, you know, like mm. one of the, like the biggest like rap group in, Thai in Thailand, so I right. wanted to have a meeting with them, like, check out some music, so Basically, before that, yeah, yeah, I arranged <laughs> for, for Sona to, to go into the Titanium Studios to present a few songs, you yeah. know. And right yeah. before that, Joe was like, okay, before you let them listen to anything. No, he was supposed to <laughs> leave these songs on my desktop because I was right. supposed to finalize the album. Right. And he didn't. <laughs> so right before the, I'll tell it, man, for a while. <laughs> right before the meeting okay. with, with Thailand's biggest rap group, I'm like, dude, I haven't gone through this track because I need like a couple of more tracks. And then, you know, uh, when he played Apokaba, it kind of was like, mm, yeah, that's hot. Hey, why don't you take that out? Because I didn't want to play him to play something that I would want and, you know, a conflict. So, mm -hmm. so Apokaba got chosen, like, the song. I heard it for the first yeah. time in we a hotel room. We even melody as well. Yeah, in a hotel room in, in Bangkok. Yeah. Yeah, and we, wrote, we came out the melody. The straight melody away. was, like, there instead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 so continue. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, basically that was that. A couple months later, we were actually on the deadline itself of the album. A right. couple of days passed and uh, we and then Joe was thinking of like maybe like adding a couple more songs and so the one of those two songs that we added at the very last minute was Abu Kaba and right. one more was Satu Kali which li was literally recorded the day of the deadline. Yeah, Satu Kali we did yeah. it the last we, day. Yeah. I mean the <laughs> label was mad. They, they were pissed. Really angry. My manager was like, screaming at me. Okay, so what's next, guys? Can we expect another hit collaboration? Um, maybe not so soon. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we, we've got two back-to-back -back singles together. Mm -hmm. But what one thing's for sure, like we all we we're, we're always in the studio writing. So I think now I think this this combination has proven to be, you know, worth the combination. Yeah. Yeah. So we're working on a couple of songs, a few, uh, you know, to begin with, with for other artists. Mm -hmm. Can't reveal them yet, but you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're writing since the AJL win. You know, people have been coming out to us like, "Hey, write, mm -hmm. write us a track." <laughs> so hopefully, we can deliver. You know. 
Right. Okay. Now, both of you. I mean, you've done a couple of things. Both of you, you and you. So, out of all the things that you've done so far, which were probably the one that you're most part, proud of, Joe? First. I'm proud of. I'm proud of the album. Have you know, Sona's Helm, the album he did nine tracks, right? Mm -hmm. Out of the fourteen, and you know, it's proving to you know. Two singles in, you know, Havoc and Apukaba, you know, we've already had decent amount of success. But what's more important is like we've managed to re-engage with Malaysians out there. Like it's it's crazy how Malaysians don't even realize that they know hip hop more than they, they can give they give credit to themselves. Mm -hmm. For instance, like yesterday we released a new single called Bite and Bite lyrically is street. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's nothing like Apukaba. It's a different type of language altogether. It's the type of Malay that you would use every day. Yeah. And you you know, and it's a bit of English here and there. And so I was reading the comments like we you know we, I was just going through the comments like we released it, not even twenty four hours ago, um, and people some of them were going in like fans like oh lyrics they thought this macam lagu apa kabar so but that's the thing though you have to get the album have have the have, have a album because there are 14 songs and I, th I have songs that are like by it or have that is just street then but then again I have songs that that are like apa benar that that are like really lyrical or like the language is deep so you know I'm very proud of the album have and how we've the whole team has worked to get this album out, you know. Right. Okay. Yeah. And you? Um, I guess you know, like I've 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 spent the most part of the past three years working on my album at the same time as working on Joe's album. So I guess you know, um, as far as now goes, is what I'm most proud of. You know, I can't wait to put it out. Yeah. It will be out this year. Okay. And uh, yeah, can't wait to share it with the world. Great. Okay. So where do you guys see yourselves in? Ten years. Wow. Well, I don't know if I will still be doing what I do, but I, I certainly <clears> hope so. You know, like music, making music, and just being part of getting to create things or being part of um, like developing new artists. That's what my passion mm -hmm. is about. You know, I believe there's so much talent out there in Malaysia, and although we're a small company, you know, we still have. We could still give a platform, you know, to to new artists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. So okay. Apart from the fact that you want to be rapping till sixty, <laughs> <laughs> what else? Where do you see yourself in ten years? In ten years, yeah. um, <laughs> I want to be able to. I mean, I see myself wanting to be able to see, you know, new artists uh, prosper. You know. Maybe like who knows in the future in like AJL in ten years from now you'll have like five hip hop songs competing, you never know. You know these are the kind of things I would l like to be able to see in the next ten years and um, not just that but also, you know hip hop being recognized, um, like Malaysian hip hop being recognized on an international mm -hmm. scale. You know just like how Japanese hip hop and Korean hip hop right now is r is really big. You know mm -hmm. even though some people don't understand the language but they they dig it because it's hip hop. You know, so I'm, I'm kind of hoping that, we're, that I'll, I'll be around to see that happen as well. Right, okay. Uh, so now, what would you say to your fans or people who come up to you and say they want to be just like you? Hmm. Wow. I normally tell mm -hmm. a kid, like, no, you can be better than me. You know, mm -hmm. you could you could be anything you want to be. You could be the prime minister if you mm -hmm. want. You know, um, so it's, I mean, it's cool that you look up to us, but yeah, it's cool. Yeah, but but be yourself as well, yeah. because you know, there's talent within and everybody. It's just about finding that talent. Like for me, I'll give you an example. Like before, I wanted to be a rapper. I wanted to be a footballer. Every day I go for training. I, I was part of like KL football project, and it went from a thousand kids. We got cut to eight hundred. <laughs> but before I even got to the final twenty-four, you know, I got cut at hundred or two hundred. So I know that, wow, there are like 199 kids that are better than me. Or mm -hmm. I couldn't accept that. So, I mean, I still play football. I love football. But I knew quick that, okay, my talent to be the best, is, this might not be my sport. Mm -hmm. 
So sometimes it's about going out there and like trying everything. You know, as a kid, like you got to try everything. Play the guitar, play the drums, play football, play badminton, do everything. You know, draw, mm -hmm. paint, whatever. And you, you will find your passion. The minute you find your passion, then then comes the hard work. You know, there's that ten thousand hour rule. Like you need to be mastering your craft, regardless what it is. You know? So that's how what I would tell a kid. Like you can be anything you want to be. Remember, it comes with a lot of hard work. All right, mm -hmm. great. Okay, now so number one, before we end, what would you like to say to your fans? My fans, well, I would like to say, well, first of all, thank you for being my fan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could have been fans of anybody else, but you decided to be fans of me, and I really, really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. uh, look out for some uh, new Sona One music coming out sooner than soon. All right. Yes. So. Okay. Joe, you want to add on to that? <laughs> no, thank you for having us on the show. And, uh, yes, thank you for having us. All right, Sorry well. for running my mouth a bit too much. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's not fun. at all. <laughs> We're delighted to have you. Well, Thank thanks you. so much for coming to the show. Thank you. Thank you. And that's all the time we have for the show today. For the latest updates, go to redcarpet.net.my. And don't forget to watch Red Carpet With on EBM Channel 201 every week as we bring you interesting interviews with celebrities every week. Till next time. Red Bye. Red Carpet. Segera masa bila lapang semua makan Segera Show pertama luar KL Di Pulau Pinang di Kapan Korang Ini dekat jalan di sampingku Aku tak